All right, we're back. It's um, COM 305. That's game game programming one, and it's uh, week eight, lesson eight, part four. We just in the last uh, video we did um, talked about administration stuff, things about uh, you know assignment number three, final project, final presentation. That there's no exam in this course, uh, but there's going to be it's going to be presentation heavy near the end and and, and project heavy, uh, which is a different thing, diff a different pain than doing a, uh, an exam, right? Um, on the on the plus side, yeah, you know, you're gonna have people, you're gonna have the opportunity to work with somebody else. Uh, that could be also a negative for some people. I don't like working with anybody else. Uh, but right now, we're gonna be switching gears and talking about um, this project we were working on before. Again, I'm I'm looking at FPS demo for section one. I put it up on GitHub if you want to follow along, and I've got all my files up there, uh, so you should have what I have, right? Um, and this is what we see right here. So I've got what I've kind of done is I've created a maze tile, right? Here's my maze tile. And as I move around, I've also created a background so that the skybox is dark, a dark skybox. And when I play the game, right, I, it looks like this. Let me just look at it from a full screen mode. So I'm, I'm looking at it like this. I've got my skybox. I can walk around, right? And then I can jump up, right? And then and I can see the entire screen here. Right, as I move around, it's not bad, right? And again, I've created this level by slapping these two, uh, these, these tiles together. And later on in this series that I'm going to be doing, right, we're going to be talking about how to generate these tiles uh, procedurally, so by code, as opposed to uh, putting them together here in the hierarchy, right? We don't want to do that. We want to make each individual, I mean, you could do that for each level and make the levels all the exact same. Or you could, or you could, make, or you could make it. You could make it so that random level. So every time I play the game, it's a little bit. It's a different challenge, right? That's what I was. I would do, and you can make this as big as you want. Like right now, if I look at this in two D, right, just for a second, um, and again, I can, I can kind of hover in to the two D map. So if I look at this in two D, it kind of looks like you know one slice of a map, and you can make this map as as big as you want. Um, and you, know, you can see that if I'm going to start from here, my player is going to have to go around here and, and go through the level. I can use each tile to put in uh, pickups at random locations. So let's say I have a pickup here, here, and here, each tile. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. So here's one tile. So if I click on the tile itself, I'm going to just pull it up for a second. There's one tile, right? That one tile that we made in Blender, right? That we imported here, right? So each tile is its, its own thing, right? So if you notice, if I zoom in here, right, and again, you can grab the, the assets from the GitHub site, right? You can see that um, I can have a few spots that I can randomly generate uh, pickups, right? And also, I want to generate a place where my player starts off. It's probably going to be at the origin, 0, 0, 0, right? But that's, I can do that. So every time I generate a tile, I can have an algorithm so that it also generates a random pickup somewhere on this tile, which is not going to be inside of a wall. Right? I can set up some standard places, like locations, spawn points, if you will. And I choose one of the four spawn points, say three or four spawn points. One of the four spawn points or two of the spawn points, you're going to have these random pickups. So if I was going to do that, um, let me just go back and undo so to get this thing back into place. And if I zoom in here as an example, if you look at this, uh, this level that we kind of you know, really quickly put together, this is like a fast and uh, you know, kind of a, a way to put this thing together quick and dirty is like what I like to say, right? Um, let's just pan over here for a second, so let's just use the hand. So I could put a uh, some kind of pickup on top, like on the roof. I could put like some kind of coin or pickup. I could put something in here. There could be areas where I put it in. I won't put it inside. It won't be, I can't, won't, it doesn't make any sense for it to generate randomly inside of a wall or something. So it has to be something that's on here. And that's what I want to do. So every time I instantiate a, a maze tile, it's going to randomly, the maze tile itself will have some kind of script attached to it that randomly instantiates a pickup. That's what the right thing to do is, right? So it'll kind of pull together a pickup and then my player collides with it and I get a, a pickup sound. Here's another thing you can do. Each maze tile can have, can randomly spawn an enemy, right? I can create an enemy creature or some kind of enemy that, you know, comes at me, right? Each maze tile could have an enemy that's associated with it. So I can have potentially a bunch of enemies roaming around here, the same one for this level, right, as an example, but that spawn at random positions inside the, inside the maze. And frequently enough that, you know, they can come at me 
and, uh, and basically cause me to have some trouble, right? So all of that can be part of the maze tile. So all I have to do is use my game controller, I don't have that right now, a game controller object to randomly spawn these maze tiles all across the board, right? As many as I want. And I'm, I'm thinking something in the, in, the, in, the, in the magnitude of 20 or 40, like 40 maze tiles of 16 by 16 meters each, you know, kind of thing. So it's kind of a neat concept. Um, you can also certainly place your maze and pre-make every one of your levels ahead of time, right? So level one, level two, level three. Instead of doing procedural generation, you can do manual uh, level creation, um, which works really nice too. If you want to, you know, make each level look a lot different. It's not random. You might, you could create a random maze level, right? And you could create other levels that are that you're going to make that are more set. That you have to get by that first level. You know how to defeat it, and then you get to the second level. So just enough about level creation. We, we're still kind of at the very beginning of the idea of level creation. How do I make levels uh, in, in Unity? Okay, let's get back to our, our dude though, right? Our main, um, uh, our main character here. So here's our player, and if I kind of press F to do a you know, frame select mode, right? Uh, here I am, and if you notice my player, um, there's a couple of, he has a couple of things like I talked about last day when we did the intro, right? Um, one thing is, if you notice his first person controller script, he is, um, first of all, the gravity multiplier is two, right? Take a look at that. I didn't change, this is kind of stock with our standard assets, right? Uh, his walk speed is five, his run speed is 10, his jump speed is 10. I can change these things for to adjust them for my game, right? So these are the things that are kind of, that come with. Uh, mouse look, I can choose my sensitivity for the mouse look. Uh, minimum, maximum X values, I can make it smooth, uh, all kinds of other, other things from mouse look. I mean, it has some really cool things here. Um, camera kick, so in terms of the way it bounces around. Head bob, right now, um, you can see that there's a horizontal bob, it's not a lot. Uh, the jumping bob, when he jumps up and down, right? Footstep sounds, I can add them or remove them. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that's packed inside our character controller. And these are all things that, um, um, you know, I can include or not uh, as we as we continue to take this thing further, right? I've also, uh, we've also got a rigid body, which has um, a mass of one. We're using gravity. It also is kinematic, so co a combination of, of gravity and kinematic. And then there's the audio source that comes up that's play on awake that basically shows our character coming into the scene, right? So all these things are packed inside of a controller. And we also have... Uh, further than that, our character controller object, that's what, that's what it's called, it's a custom object, and it has a height of 1.8 meters, right? Now that's a pretty tall guy. If you want to make it smaller or shorter person, you can do that, right? Because that's how tall they are in terms of our collider and the way that the camera's positioned and everything, right? So these are some adjustments you can make. Okay, but one thing I want to make in an adjustment, I'm just going to open up the player controller here. And if you notice here in the player camera, this is the preview that I get in the bottom right hand corner of what my, my view is going to look like, right? What I'm, where I'm staring, right? Well, I kind of want to add my weaponry, right? My gun, right? And I've got some assets that I'm going to share with you uh, for the gun instead of making it this time around. Um, I want to place the gun in the scene, but I want to kind of pull it into uh, its own prefab. So I've got a kind of another project that I worked on. Then I'm going to pull it up just to save some time. Not that we can't make our own gun. We can certainly do that in Blender, but we can take another whole couple hours making a gun. And I don't think it's really worth our time. I think we did all that in Comp 391, right? So let's uh, pull up Unity Projects. And underneath that, there's another thing that I, I think I called it uh, oh, FPS 1. Let's see if I did FPS 1 or FPS 2. I'll know immediately when I go in there because there's, yeah, that's our sites. I might pull something in from there. Um, there's a scene, and there's imported assets. Yeah. Okay, so I've got some, I've got some models, right, and materials. So I'm gonna kind of pull in these models and materials. Um, animations. Let's see if I got some other stuff I can pull in here. Humanoid. Yeah, idle stuff like that. Some animations. That's an imported asset. I really don't want that one. Yeah. What happened there? 
That was weird. Oh yeah, there's some... Uh, that's really strange. Like, it totally disappeared on me. Did I pull it in somewhere? I may have done that by accident. Yeah, I did. Um, so let's just... Uh, I'm going to grab this thing called Low Poly Guns for sale, right? And um, I'm going to pull it into my other uh, scene here, and I'm going to share it with you on GitHub in a second. So I'm going to kind of go into my um, my desktop and I just make a copy of what I was working on, Unity Projects, and I'm going to pull it right into my library. I'm going to do it a little differently than we've done it before. So for SPS Demo Section 1, and I'm going to go into my Assets, and I'm just going to kind of copy and paste uh, from these things. So I'm going to say low poly guns. I'm going to copy this whole thing. See, hopefully I get everything. And then pull it into my um, I don't know if I should, if I need all that. Maybe just models. Let me get all my models and materials. So yeah, I'll get my models and materials for these low poly guns and pull them into my models meta. So I'm just going to grab all that. Copy and then going to my models and then instead of maze.toblend I'll paste in here, paste 44 items in here, so I'm pasting and then let's see what I get when I go back to Unity I should have kind of an import, yeah it's importing and if I go back into models right I have a bunch of models now I use uh, I can use the, some guns, some different kinds of guns and under materials, I have some other materials in there as well. I'm going to just pull these materials just to make it so it's the same. I'm going to put all these materials inside our materials folder just to reorganize myself here. It's not going to change anything. I'm just going to kill this folder just so we have one materials one mod, uh, materials folder instead of two, but and one models folder. So I've got my maze and I've got a bunch of guns, right? Let me just uh, save this file, save scene, and file, save project. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Unity for a second and go into um, command line mode into my project. So uh, desktop and then Unity and then um, let's do a list here. And then we'll do FPS uh, demo uh, for section one, which is you guys. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git add dot git commit minus M and I'll say added guns. Right, and then git push origin uh, master. So that should push the guns up uh, up to GitHub. It's gonna take a bit of time. There we go. So check that out. Go up on GitHub. You can grab your guns from GitHub right now, and you'll have what I have. All right, let's take a look at the final result here. So I've gonna, I'm gonna pull up my Unity again. So I'm gonna go back into here, design. I'm gonna go down into Unity. And in here, I'm going to pull up my FPS demo section one, and I've got my gun. Let's pull this up now. Okay, so I've got several guns. Um, if you want to see what they look like, you can preview them here. I've got an AK rifle, right? I also got some ammo and stuff too, if you want to add those in. I kind of add them in. I also got an AK site and some te a texture map. This is what the texture looks like. Uh, these ones that say texture, um, what I'd like you to do is anything that says text in them, I want you to pull these textures into the textures folder. So I'm going to kind of say, take the texture and kind of pull it in here. I probably could have done that for you, right? And the same thing goes with our, go back to models. I want to kind of get all the ones that say texture. So there's my M9, right? Get that M9 and pull that into uh, textures. And same thing goes with my M16 and my MP5 and uh, my shell texture, which looks like this. So I got some shells. And again, we have to talk about some of these, whether we'll use them all or not. Uh, there's different ways of doing this stuff. Again, it's all kind of smoke and mirrors. Um, but we can talk about this. Like, for example, here's an M16 site, right? We may decide to use this or not. Um, same thing with a the shell. If I was actually going to look at the shell, it looks like an actual shell casing that pops up, right? So it's a full model that looks kind of pretty cool. Um, but I'm probably going to make it so that my rifle is going to be this AK rifle. This is almost like this AK-47 kind of knockoff, right? Um, you can use whatever you want. You can use an HK rifle if you want. Whatever kind of rifle you want, you can kind of put in it or some kind of pistol. These are all the stuff that I've given you, right, up online. 
And this would be under models. If you looked at assets models, you'll see all these things on GitHub. Okay, so I'm going to use the HK rifle and pull it into my scene. And I'm going to put it as a, uh, under my player camera, that's where it's going to go, right? So if you notice, there's player, player camera. And for now, uh, just to, uh, you know, so we don't see all this clutter, I'm going to just uh, move the maze tiles so that they're up above my player, just like one of these, like this. It's just moving them up. Okay, so I have my directional light. Move that up too. I don't care to see that. But my player should be the bottom so we can work on this thing. And I want to pull my AK rifle, my AK-47 equivalent, into my player camera. So I'm going to kind of make, move it in there. So again, there's different ways of doing this. If I kind of pull it in like this, right, and then kind of move it under my camera, that's where I want to kind of do it. One thing is I want to reset my position so I can actually see this thing. So I'm going to go right-click, reset, so I can see my there. So there you see my camera on the left there. If I play the game now, you'll see what I, what I see. You'll see this. You see nothing, right? Because where's my camera? It's sitting on my, on my head, right? So this is not good. This has got to be in my scene, right? So how do I get my camera or my, my AK rifle in my scene? That's the, that's the first thing i got to do. Well, let's do a split screen. So I'm going to kind of move this over here like this. Um, and I can, sometimes it's, it's useful to, since I'm just going to be doing stuff with the camera, it's useful to change my view so that my uh, layout doesn't look like this, right? So I'm going to move from this layout. Um, by the way, I'm going to save my layout. I like my layout the way it is. I'm going to save my layout to a new layout. I'm going to call this FPS, just so I know what, which layout I'm in. I'm going to go back to my, um, you know, kind of my uh, default, uh, or let's look at wide first. Let's see what that does. It. That's pretty good. I like wide. Right. Um, I almost don't need my inspector too much, right? But um, it's cool that I have my project uh, files here in wide, right? Um, I could probably do with moving these 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 whole these whole panels uh, completely uh, to the right. I don't care about the assets too much. In fact, I can probably take this whole project panel and kind of bury it under here, right? So I don't care. This is just like a different view. All I care about is this and my little bit of my hierarchy, right? And I want to pull even this down so it's as low as it can, can be. All right, so that's kind of what I want to look at. And I want to pull my game. I got my scene in my game, and I want to pull my game so that it's separate, so it's kind of uh, moved to the set. So see, pull kind of a split screen of my game and my scene. Now this is really important because I want to be able to focus on my player. So I want to still be able to uh, see my player asset here. I got maze tiles. Here's my player. And again, let me move all this stuff so it's above my player in the hierarchy just so that it appears above my player, right? And there's my player, or maybe maybe my, in this particular case, put my player on the top, how about that? Because the way it's been laid out, there we go. Player on the top. All right, and if you notice, I have my camera and I have my AK rifle, right here it is. And then I'm gonna kind of zoom in on it. I'm gonna probably use frame, frame select mode to, to zoom in, and I'm gonna rotate my view so I can see kind of what the player is looking at right now. And that's not what he's looking at. See this camera where he's, where he's headed? The camera is actually looking over here, if you notice, right? So this is the view, and this is where the camera's looking. So I gotta rotate my gun like 90 degrees to the right, right? Because my gun is pointing this way, like up top, it's on top of my head right now, right? Like going like this, right? And I gotta rotate it so it's in the right direction. So I click on my AK rifle. Notice that um, I'm gonna rotate it across the Y axis. So let's rotate it by 90 degrees. Let's try that. There we go. Now I can see part of my gun on top of my head, right? My gun is kind of positioned funny. And I'm going kind of, to zoom in here a little bit, too much, uh, so you can see where it looks like. I want to kind of bring my gun down, right? And I'm using my controls here. Now watch the right. This is the trick, right? I'm going to bring my gun down, right? And I want to bring my gun to the right, so that only that the only way I see this thing is where it's on the right kind of corner of my screen, right? Now, you might say this is okay, right? And normally if you would have, if all I had was this and there was no inspector, and by the way, I can probably get rid of the inspector if I want to because I don't really don't need it. So let's close the tab. And let's close the project tab too. Why not? That's all I really need right now, right? Um, it's kind of a two-up, if, if you will. Right? So there's my, my gun. If I kind of go over here, see that the gun is not quite in the, in the corner? That's kind of a problem, right? I want to make the gun go right into that corner. So I'm going to kind of, on the left here, that's hard to see. So I'm going to pull on the left. Here's my gun. And... I want to kind of pull it to the right a little bit, so it's right in the corner, 
I can also pull it up or down. I don't think I want it to be too much, uh, too much down. Maybe a little bit out a little bit more so I can see some of my gun, more more of my gun, but not quite so much, right? Maybe like to there, right? So I want to see the back of my gun like this. Now notice how it clips. There's a little bit of clipping there. We're going to fix that. All right, so that's pretty cool, right? There's my gun. My gun is hanging out in the middle of my head, right, it looks like, but and that's how we play the game, right? Um, are you with me on this one? Are you moving your gun around like I am? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, my gun doesn't display its textures. All right. Well, I don't know why. To download it and install everything, right? So, how about you? Everyone else got textures? Huh? You're not doing that. Anyone else? How about you, Selena? Are you doing it with me? Sort of. Okay. Well, I'm going to go around. We'll take another short break and I'll go around and check it out. But you should have the textures. If I uploaded them into uh, Unity and if you upload the project, you should be able to get it, right? Because I've got everything there for you. Um, eventually, what I'm going to do, Igor, is I'm going to do a break. I'm going to do a pause and I'm going to send everything back up to Unity, uh, up to GitHub again with all this stuff built, uh, built in. Okay, so here's my gun. And again, I'm looking at it. Let's test it. Uh, I'm going to go back from wide, um, you know, to my uh, my uh, FPS view, it's my FPS. So back to what I saw before, and let's play this thing and see what what I can see. All right, cool. So there's my gun. All right, it's hanging out in the middle of my screen here. Hmm. I mean, I could probably give it a little bit of lift because right now it looks like the gun is pointing down on the bottom of my screen, right? So I'm kind of see where my mouse is. My mouse is kind of up here, and then my gun is. You know, I mean, I, I, mean, I could move my my gun so it's looking like this, right? But really. Um, my gun is kind of looking in kind of in, the, in a little bit lower on my screen. I could angle it a little bit, but if I run, this is the problem we had last time. So I run through, and then my gun goes through the wall, right? Remember this? Gun goes through the wall, and we want to kind of take care of that. And I showed you guys how to do that last time, um, but I'll do it again so you guys remember, right? Here's the good thing about the gun. See how it receives shadows? This is a good thing. The bad thing is that it casts shadows. See how I can see my gun just disembodied there on the ground? That's bad. So let's stop playing here for a second. And let's go to my gun, my AK rifle, and see where it says receive shadows. That's cool, right? Cast shadows, no. Let's put that off, right? So I don't want it to cast shadows on the ground because it will look like it's a disembodied gun, right? That's not a good thing. All right, so uh, use light probes. That's cool. And definitely receive shadows. So if there's any kind of strobing effect or any kind of lights that are in the scene, it'll look like the gun is in the scene. That's good. But remember what I did last time. In order for us to fix this problem, right, we need to do a couple of things here, right? One, we need to create a gun layer, right? So if you notice here on the right, there's tags. I'm going to open this up for you guys to see. There's a tag where it says tags, right? My player is tagged as a player, but my, my gun itself should be tagged as a gun. So let's go into default, not the tag, but the default layer. And let's change this default layer and add a layer. And we're going to add the gun layer. Right, so we're going to add gun and kind of go back out, click on the gun, and then assign the layer to the gun. So that's the first thing we're going to do, the gun layer. And I also want to create something else. I want to create a gun camera, a gun camera, which is going to solve our problems. And I'll show you this in a second. So here's my player camera. I want to click on the player camera. I want to right click, and I want to add another camera on the scene, right? So just for exactly in the location of the gun, the player camera, I want to add my gun camera. There it is, right? And I want to kind of make it so that it's a little higher here. So it's on my it's on my player camera, right? There it is. And I want to put my gun inside my other camera, my second camera. Let's just do one of these, like this. So it's going to be this hierarchy. So player, player camera, camera, and, the, and then the gun, right? I want to change the name of my camera to gun camera. So up here, let's change this to gun camera. Right, so we know what it is. And I want to assign that as a layer as well. So kind of turn that on. It's gun. Yes. Okay, cool. So we got the gun as a camera. We've got our gun camera as well. And um, the gun camera, if you look at it, it sees everything in the scene. And this is the great thing about using a camera. I'm gonna move this over here. What I can do is it it talks about how to, you know, how to how it views the world, right? My gun camera right now, my clear flags is skybox. I don't want to say clear flag is skybox, right? Um, I want to say, uh, you know, depth only. Let's change that gun camera to depth only. All right, so now you see that there's no skybox, just a depth. 
I also want to make the layers happening. So I'm, I'm layering one camera on top of another, right? So there's different views going on. I've got the back camera, the main camera for my character, as my player camera. And that has a depth of zero. Notice here, there's a depth of zero. My gun camera is going to have a depth of one, right? So it's going to be higher. It's going to be kind of in front of my other camera. And this is the way we can create multiple layering that we see things on the screen, right? We have different layers going on. And our cameras, different cameras, see different things. Okay, so there's our gun. There's kind of our, um, right here in the, on the bottom corner. Uh, it's pretty cool. So this is what I want to do. In my, uh, my culling mask right now, right? Um, my gun camera sees everything. That's what this everything means, culling mask, right? I want to turn this off so that I see nothing. There's my gun camera. See how it goes dark? And now when I want to turn it, again, I want to go to culling mask. And all I want to see is my gun layer. Gun. See how it kind of turns on here as a gun? Cool. Now I want to go to my player camera and I want to turn on everything, right, except for my gun. So I don't see my gun. The effect is really cool when I layer this on. So if I press play, right, now I get this. I got my gun, right, and when I go to the wall, it doesn't go in anymore, huh? It doesn't go in. It stays, it kind of hangs out at the top, and it looks like it's kind of always in my scene as I'm walking through, right? Again, a little bit low. Maybe I want to kind of, it's just a prop, right? All of our effects, ah, all of our effects are going to be, um, you know, are going to be generated from other things in our scene, not our gun. Our gun is just a prop, right? So um, we're going to make it so that the gun itself uh, will look, you know, at, at the camera and so on. And we're going to create some animation. We kind of did this last time, but I'm redoing it for you guys so you see it one more time, right? How do I do this kind of stuff? Um, let's go back and so I've got my player. And what I want to do is I want to, I want to my player is not a prefab. Right now my, pre, my prefab is just a maze tile. I don't want to lose all the work I've just done. So really good practice is to pull my player, this player object, right into my uh, prefabs folder. So I'm going to kind of pull that in, right? Notice how now my player is a prefab, right? This is good. It means I can wipe all this stuff away except for my directional light. And I can use my player in alternate in other scenes, right? That's why I want to make my, my player a prefab. Well, what I want to do also, once I've made my player my free prefab, is any changes I want to make to my player, I got to save back or apply to my prefab. This is one of the things I ask you to do in the exam. Apply everything back to the prefab. How do I do that? Click the apply button, obviously, right on the pre on the pre on the, on the actual player object. Okay, so we did this last time again, but what I want to do is I want to add a, a canvas, right? And I want to add my uh, reticule, right? And what it is is like the little dot that's in the middle of my screen. Remember, my gun, just a prop. I'm never actually firing my gun, right? All I'm doing with my gun is it's just looking like it's a gun, right? But it doesn't really do anything. The real thing that does stuff is my, my camera is going to be the thing that generates everything. We'll see that in a second. Okay, so let's add in, inside this, this whole uh, scene here, we're going to add in um, a canvas. So I'm going to say UI, and we're going to add in a UI canvas. Here we go. Here's my canvas. And I don't want it to be inside my player, right? I want to kind of put it down here. I'll put it at the bottom. And if you notice, it automatically in, involves an event system. Like it's kind of built in this little event system that I that I built into my canvas. And if you notice, my canvas is massive. It's like way out here, right? Because for three D objects, the canvas is a little bit different. What it does, it represents the place where, in this view, where I'm going to put my things like my score and other stuff. This is where I would put my score and stuff. Now the level is way in here, and the canvas is massive, so it's not going to come into play. You won't see like a, you know, my canvas hovering in outside of my scene. Speaking of which, let me save my scene now. All right, and let me add on the canvas, let me add an image. We did this last time. So I'll say, um, you know, kind of a UI object image. Okay, cool. Um, well, normally, you know, the image will be seen like right here, right? Um, and what I want to do is I want to kind of, you know, this is in right now, it's, it's just ho hovering in, mid, in kind of in space here. Well, let's take a look and see what this thing looks like in game screen mode. See, it's got this black, kind of this white object here. And if I move around, watch. If I kind of play the game, 
right? This little blackness just stays in the middle of my screen here, like almost like this little screen, right? So I don't want that. I want to make this thing much smaller and change the color. So let's first let's change the color to kind of like a yellowish color. So it's kind of our, our yellow dot that's appearing in the middle of our screen, right? And I want to change the size of it. Right now, like for example, my uh, scale uh, is, is really big, right? It's 111. Uh, I can certainly go smaller than that, right? I'm looking at my image size, right? That's my image size I'm looking at. There's also a width and height value, right? Um, let's change the width and height, the actual width and height to like, let's go five by five and see how big that is, pretty good, right, five by five. And there's my dot, right, so when I play the game now, right, I've got my dot. Now, see, now it's not, now it doesn't look so bad anymore, right, where my gun is pointing. My gun is pointing at the dot, right, where my reticule is. That represents the exact middle of my, of my, uh, uh, of my camera. So when I walk around, right, you can see where I'm aiming now. And my gun, my game, it's going to be perfect aim. Whenever you fire, it's going to exactly hit where I where I target. It's not going to be an off, you know, whatever. You can certainly add that effect, you know, whatever. But as I walk down, you can see now that it looks like I got a bit of head bob uh, going on. If I jump up here, I still get a, a bit of a, a reticule firing, and it'll fire as long as I want. This is pretty good, right? Okay. So that's what we got right now. We got that piece there, right? Okay, well, we've got other pieces here that we can add in, right, that came with our prefabs. And uh, one of them in our models, if you notice, I've got an 8K site. Kind of looks like this, right? Even though the 8K site looks to be a texture, right, um, I can go alpha from grayscale if I really want to. Um, and alpha is transparency. I could do that too, right? And if I was going to pull this thing in, let's just pull this, this item. Uh, which is this AK site. If I was to pull it into the scene for a second, let's put it into the scene. So AK site, let's put it on top of the rifle, right? And just to show you where it is. And let's go into, um, I just pulled the unapplied import settings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where is my AK site now? I just pulled it in there. So where's my AK site? AK site. Oh, yeah. I see what I've done. Uh -huh. That's not good. Let's go back to the player rifle. I've kind of killed my my view, my my uh, uh, my texture. I think I killed my texture a little bit. See, uh, maybe not. It looks pretty good still. Oh yeah, I did kill my texture. Um, yeah, because what I did was I pulled in this thing and I dragged and dropped it onto my gun and it thought I was pulling in my texture. That's not what I want. Um, so I can, I might be able to undo that. Maybe not. Right, because, yeah, let's undo that. Thing. So I'm going to go undo and then undo and then undo. Yeah, that's not good. I can't undo. And I'm going to make sure that I can I can get all that back, right? Because here's my image. I've got that in there. And there's my camera. And there's my AK rifle. And yeah, it's okay. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Just my rifle is a little bit more matte, right? Because I pulled in a different texture, which I didn't want to do. Let's see if I can fix that. So how do I fix that? Well, inside my materials or my textures, I have this AK texture. I'm just going to pull that back in here like this. That's how you fix it, by the way. You go pull this AK texture in, and you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm gonna, how does it wrap itself? Yeah. It UV unwraps. It's already been made, so the texture's been made. If you actually look at the texture file, um, if I was to look at the AK texture, it looks like this, right? So it actually is completely uh, flat. It's flattened up, it's unwrapped, and what we do is just like we did in Blender, we wrapped up the texture across the, the actual object. It takes a bit of time to do. All right, so there's our, our textures back, sorry for that one. But what I meant to do was create this, um, go back, let's go back to my gun. I kind of jumped the gun, no pun intended. All right, let's go back to our models. So I've got this AK site, and it looks like this transparency, you know, let's take that transparency off again. Um, from get grayscale and apply everything so back to normal. I want to take this thing for a second and I want to put it so that it's part of a quad, right? 
So I want to include a quad in my screen, right? Now a quad is a simple two-dimensional shape, right? And I want to include it as part of my AK-47 rifle. So this is this AK rifle, I'm going to add a quad to it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go 3D object and we're going to say quad. And it's massive, it's really big, right? If I was going to look at it, you notice how it's like a sheet that's kind of on the wrong direction. I need to rotate it minus 90 degrees across the y-axis, my quad, right? This quad here. And let's rename it now so it's not a quad. We're going to call this our site. This is our site. And I'm going to rename this thing to kind of pull my quad around. So if you notice how it's, uh, it's around the y-axis, we're going to say minus 90. And let's see, I think it's 9. I think, I'm not sure if it's minus 90 or 90, but we're going to figure this out in a second. And what I want to do is I want to take this uh, AK uh, site texture, right? And I'm going to kind of apply it to the quad like this, right? So what you get is this like shadow-like effect, right? But remember what I said with my site, with my uh, texture, right? Right now, it, there's no transparency, and I want everything to be transparent. So all I see is my, my uh, you know, this, this almost like my aim that's going to come up, right? So how do, how do I fix that? I go back to my AK site, and what I want to do here is change my, that's where I went from, trans, from texture, right? Um, to my, I want to make this transparency from, and just click apply, right? There we go. And I want to kind of click uh, this uh, quad here. And if you notice now my, my quad isn't looking transparent at all. Let's see why, if I move this around the other side. Right, can you see my quad right on this side? How come I can't see my quad on this side? Remember what we talked about last day? Back face culling, people. Back face culling. But I can definitely see my quad over here. It's visible on this side. So I've got the right stuff. If you notice, my quad is right there. I want to kind of pull this back in. This, I've updated my texture so it looks like it's transparent. And I want to grab my site and pull it in, right? Okay, cool. So um, from my quad, then, and if I want to make this thing uh, transparent, right? How do I do that? How do I make this mesh renderer? I mean, right now I don't have, I want to get rid of my mesh collider. I don't want my, my collider to happen at all, my quads. Let's just get rid of it, remove component. I don't want that. Uh, my mesh render, I don't want to, um, uh, to cast shadows because that's not going to happen. So I'm going to turn that off. I also don't want it to receive shadows because that's not cool, right? So no receiving or uh, any kind of thing like that. My size is one. Um, using light probes is cool, but I really don't need to. Um, and if you notice, I'm not really getting the effect that I want. So let's just kill this transform. Because if you notice my property here, my AK site, what I should be seeing, I'm just going to go into play mode so you can see what I see. I see this. That's not cool. I want to have this part transparent, right? And that's what I, I want to get rid of. So this quad, right, this site, I want my texture, which is uh, this AK site thing. This is what I want. I want it to be transparent, right? So I want to say where it says alpha from grain scale and transparency. That's what I want to see. If I was to um, turn this one of these off, alpha from grayscale, right? Um, or if I turn off transparency, I wouldn't get that. Now it also says texture, uh, which is something that I could use here, right? If I was to say, uh, you know, Sprite, if I went to turn this into a Sprite all of a sudden, right? So it's got transparency, you know, as an example, because that's what it looks like. And if I click apply, that won't do because you see how I, I, I maintain my shape, right? So that one, that's not what I really want. I'm just to show you what, how the texture thing works, right? Um, cube map, cookie, light map, and advanced. I don't care about that. Texture is where I really want it to be. And I really do want to go with uh, alpha from grayscale and alpha transparency. And this is our preview down here. Look at our preview, right? You can see that right now it's solid. And when I click this and click apply, it goes transparent, which is really what I want, right? Alpha from grayscale and alpha, tra alpha is transparency, right? Right now, just this big spot. All right, so let's do this again. Let's just grab this site as an example, and let's just kill it. So I'm just going to kind of right click and delete it and add another quad just to show you maybe that's the problem. So right click and add a new 3D object quad. There we go. And I'm going to Instead of rotating it right now, I'm just going to drag and drop that new texture. So here's my alpha, my AK site. 
I'm going to drag it onto my quad here. There we go. And now let's take a look and see if that changed anything. Yeah, no, it didn't. See, I want it to be transparent. It's not really coming out the way I like. And I'm wondering if it's because of the way my AK site looks inside my um, thing. I want this kind of to be the other way around. I want to see my AK site and everything else around it transparency. So let me fix it and then I'll upload it to to, uh, to thing, right? So let me get rid of this thing. It's not really working out the way I want. Okay, so how do I do that? How do I change my AK site? Right now my AK site is um, alpha from grayscale and blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna leave it as is and turn it back into what it was before, which is this image, right? And I'm going to edit it in another program outside of blend, outside of uh, Unity. So I'm going to go back to uh, over here and go into Unity Projects. And what I want to do, take enough? Bye. All right, is I want to go into my, um, this is my FPS model. I want to go into my textures uh, for, my, for my gun, right? So here's my, uh, uh, again, my models. And then if I look at the, um, uh, the AK site bitmap, this one, I want to kind of change this into, that's why it's not giving me a good thing. I want to change this into a ping file, right? So I'm going to kind of right click and open with, I'm going to use my favorite editor, Fireworks. You can use whatever you want. You can use Illustrator, whatever. And then um, in Fireworks, I'm going to get this image that looks like this. Well, sorry guys, but this doesn't do anything for me, right? So I want to kill the gray. How do I do that? So I'm going to kind of use my little mark here and then bye bye make it all real transparent here this is the right way to do it actually and then when I go file uh, save as I'm gonna save this as a ping image so instead of an AK site bitmap we're gonna make it a ping so I'm gonna kind of make it from bitmap to ping just changing the object then I'll put it back into the scene there it is AK site ping and then um, I'm gonna save it inside the same place under models I'm gonna say save Okay, cool. So I've got two objects, one that's AK bitmap and the other one that's AK ping. And then I'll update this all on um, GitHub. Let's go back to here and see what happens. So I've got uh, two. Here's my AK site and there's my AK site. Whoa, hey, what's going on there? It's a texture and now if I go uh, texture from grayscale and transparency and apply, then I really get this little thing that goes on like this, which is really kind of what I want. Um, if you notice also, I could make this a Sprite 2D, right? Sprite 2D. And if I click Apply, then you can see that this is what I want as well. See the Sprite? So this might be even better, Sprite 2D. Okay. Um, now I want to get that quad back in here, so I'm going to right click and, and kind of include an empty or a 3D object quad. All right, there it is. And then I want to rotate across the Y axis again, uh, minus 90. So here's minus 90. And then I want to take this uh, site that I just made, this AK site, that's like this one, the second one, and kind of drag it onto my quad, and then it does the same kind of BS that I had last time. How did I do that last time? Killing myself over here. And I got all these other lines that I've got going on here. Um, I wonder if I have to turn the transparency on from a filtering perspective. And because there's a mode that you turn on, and then you get all that um, going on. It's not a cursor. I wonder if I was to make this a normal a texture map. I think I did this, alpha from grayscale and alpha is transparency. And then I went to like this. Then I don't see my quad really accepting that too, too much as one of my things. See if I do that in here. Oh yeah, I'll be all right. Yep, that's what I wanted, but it's the wrong effect. It's transparent. Right, but it's too transparent. Okay, it's barking up the wrong tree there. Let's uh, one more time. One more time. Let's go back to my AK site, which is this, and turn these things off and apply. Now I get what I want. Okay, good. So now I see my quad, and all I've done here uh, just to revamp is it's it's my on my quad itself, which is my site. I'm gonna rename this as site. Right. Um, you notice that there's the actual uh, material that's assigned. That's what, I, that's what I need to change my material for my quad. And the built-in material showed something else. It was opaque, and I turned it to transparent. That's what I've done. And then it allows me to see my transparency, which is right here. Okay, but this is a pretty big quad. right? This is what it's going to look like. And why am I making this thing anyway? 
what I want to do is when I focus my gun, right, I'm just going to use the hand tool for a second to kind of go over. I want my, this, this thing to come into the scene, all right? So right now, and it's way too big, like it's massive. Let's turn this down to like really small. So 0.5, let's say, by 0.5. And let's make this, well, the Z is, doesn't matter, but make that 0.5 as well. Um, and uh, let's bring this in. So I'm going to kind of rotate this thing again. You'll see what I'm talking about here. So that it's kind of at the, at the top of my uh, off screen is where it's got a C. So let me just take a look and see if I can see that. Cool, cool. So I don't see my, my uh, thing here, right? And I just see my dot. My quad is there, right? But it's off screen, something that you can't really see, right? Let's just get back out there and make sure my quad doesn't catch shadows because that would be bad. Okay, so there's my sight, right? It's kind of hidden in the back of my gun. And what I'm going to do is when I animate it, I'm going to bring my sight into the scene, right? So I can see my sight like I'm focusing my gun. So when I kind of do my focus, my sight's going to come on the screen, right? I'm going to do some special effects here to make that go. All right, so a couple things we have to do for my quad. I don't need a mesh collider, so let's get rid of that. So I'm not going to collide with anything. Uh, my mesh renderer is cool. I like what, what I've done here, So, but I don't want it to, to receive or cast shadows. I need to turn that all off because I can't have my site uh, having any visible effect on my scene whatsoever. Okay, cool. And let us save the scene. Now, with this in place, I'm going to upload Git update to GitHub. So I'm going to say Unity quit, right? I'm going to go back into uh, here and I'm going to go uh, git add dot git commit minus m and then say added uh, site. That's what I've kind of done. I've added the gun, I added my site, and then git push origin master. If you pull that one down now, you'll get the site as well. Okay? And the, the site that I made with the ping. Uh, ping file. Probably didn't need to do that, but anyway. Okay, let's go back into Unity. So I'm going to go back in there and I'll let's go back to this demo here that we're doing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create some animations now, right? So, and what I want to do is when I um, um, when I focus my gun, I'm just going to kind of change my my view for a second. So I'm just going to move around. So there's my sight, and if you notice. Um, my site is such that when this thing comes into play, I want my site to come in front of my gun, right, so I can see the dot, right? So notice how I don't see anything right now, right? Even if I open this way up, it doesn't matter. Let's go into that other view. So I'm going to go layout wide, and there's my wide view. Oh, that's not what I wanted, but anyways. And uh, I don't need the inspector. I'm going to kill the inspector. Close this tab up. And you know what? I don't need the project at all right now. So I'm going to close that tab. And let's just reduce the hierarchy so it's really small. So if you notice, um, I've got my scene. And let's just look at my uh, gun. So it's my under my player. I'm going to focus in there. So get in there, frame select mode. And zoom in so I can see my gun. And then I'm going to change my view so I can see what I'm seeing right now. So this is what my gun is looking like. And notice how I'm also seeing my quad, right? So I'm going to kind of move this up. This is what my quad looks like. It's kind of invisible. It's kind of hanging out here. And, and it's, although I can, slightly, I can slightly see this transparency, which is kind of annoying to me. Um, and the way, of course, to test this out is if I was to put this thing in the scene. So let's move it in so we can see it, right? And if you do that in play, right, you can see that, um, you see that sight, right? So this is kind of annoying. almost looks like a glass that kind of comes up in my site. And it's got some reflectivity. Take a look at that reflection. I shouldn't see any of that. My site should be purely transparent. So let's go back out. And how do I do that? So I'm going to kind of go back into the inspector. I'm going to go back to, uh, um, yeah, OK, I'll leave that layout. I'll go back to this in a second. I'm going to go back to FPS. And uh, one thing I want to do with my, with my uh, thing, if I notice, if I click onto this, is on my material, right, I've got transparent, right, and my metallic is zero. My smoothness is really like 0.5. I want to turn that right down to nothing so I don't have any kind of, there's no reflectivity here whatsoever. I don't want to see reflectivity in my albedo, right? 
because otherwise that's why I'm getting that weird kind of effect, right? So zoom in. See how I get almost like this little glass-like effect, right? Don't want that. That's one thing I do not want. Also from an albedo perspective, if I want to kind of grab this thing, right now it's looking like it's way up here as a preset, right? And I want to turn my alpha channel, see this alpha channel right now? Um, I got to be careful, right? Because I don't want to kill what I'm seeing here, right? But my alpha channel should be turned like kind of in the middle. So I'm going to kind of roll this to the, uh, to the left. And I can click onto it to see. The only thing is I got to be careful what it, what it shows here because I don't want to totally kill it. Because otherwise if I went completely transparent, I want to be able to see my sights. It's got to be a little bit more transparent than, than what it is. Still kind of focus on what I'm seeing, right? Um, that's one way to kind of kill it. That this is what's causing my uh, my scene to go off. If I change these, this is going to color it. So I'm going to kind of if I go right one here like this, I can change these ones, and that's not going to do anything to my scene at all. That's going to actually not have any effects except maybe make it a little bit green or red or whatever it's going to be, right? Um, so I don't care to fiddle with these whatsoever. I'm just going to put these back to where it is, just to show you what that effect has. And again, I'm changing my my quads material. This is what this thing is that I'm looking at right now, right? So again, the more uh, solid it is, the more it becomes apparent what my quad will look like. So I want that transparent effect to uh, to go away. For now, though, let's leave it as is. I just wanted to point it out to you. So if it comes up and you see what it is, um, you know you'll ignore it. Okay. So I got my mesh filter on, my mesh render, my casting shadows is no, my receiving shadows is no. Um, I'm using my light probes. If I turn light probes off, right, again, there's no visible effect here on this scene, right? Same thing with blend probes. If I, cl if I click off on blend probes, that really doesn't do anything, right? Um, again, I don't want any kind of light probes whatsoever. And if I press play now, you can see that I still see this layer that's in front of my face um, and it's kind of annoying. I don't want to see this transparency, right? Okay. But that's what I want to get rid of. So what you're going to see is when I press my right mouse button, this is the effect, I want this thing to come in front of my face, right? That's what I want. So how do I program that uh, so it does that? Okay, two things. So let's click on my quad again, which is my sight, and pull it back along the back of my gun somewhere so it's off screen. Let's just check it. There it is. And what I want to do is when I press my right mouse button, right, my camera does this little animation. So how do I do that? Well, let's make a new folder called animations. I'm going to say create, uh, you know, new folder. We'll call it animations. And the great thing with this one is I can make an animation. Uh, remember what we did with this dragging and dropping stuff? We can do that same thing, or I can, um, as long as I have my option, my, my rifle clicked on, right, I can go to my animation window. If you notice, here's my animation window. And there's the animator, but I want to create an animation by clicking the create button while I'm clicking my rifle on, right? So let's try that. So I'm going to say create, and um, it's going to be under my animations folder right now. Let's just check to make sure it's correct. So I'm going to go here, and if you notice, I'm going to go uh, back up one to assets, and if you notice if I go into my animations, there's nothing in there. Let's call this, right, my aim animation. So it's going to kind of bring my aim, uh, or gun aim is what it's going to be. So I'll say gun aim. That's what it's going to be. And I'll press save. So what gun aim does is, and right now I have, I'm not doing anything, if you notice, right? I'm not aiming my gun or whatever. Let's bring my animation window for now. Let's bring it like kind of low down here. Let's kind of put it at the bottom. So what I want to do is, this is where I want to kind of, I'm going to use all windows here to kind of make this right. I'm going to kind of zoom in. And let's pull this out to the side. I need kind of everything here in this one, and I'll reset my view later on, right? So there's my gun. What I wanted to do is I want to bring my gun with my animation to the left. So I haven't moved it. Now notice on the left-hand side here, it's starting off at zero frames. I want to kind of move this in. I want to kind of zoom in here. So I can move my head. This is my playhead. This is how we do animations. My playhead is the is this red bar. I want to move this red bar into the five uh, frames mode. So I've moved it into five frames. So the first frame is going to be as is, and then the second frame, I'm going to move this to the left. Watch how it records what I'm doing, right? So my gun moves to the left. 
I'm going to use this screen as a guide, right? And I'm going to move this up, right? And hey, where's, what happened to my camera? How come I can't see this thing? And how come I'm not seeing this, this field? Uh, I'll tell you why in a second. But notice how these values here become red. These ones are the ones that are being recorded. All the movements that I've just done in my animation. Let's make it so that it's centered, so that my gun, my, this, this, the aiming part of my gun right here, right? This part that I'm seeing is right in the middle of that dot. So it looks like it's a kind of, I'm using my dot as a guide to kind of produce that aim. See the front of my scope there? I want to kind of bring that up just a touch. So there it is, right? And actually just move it aside. And then I'm going to bring it down. I'm just going to adjust it. I'm going to move it so that it's like right in the middle and then bring it down a little bit. And also what I do is I want to, I want to angle my gun, right? So that it's exactly what I'm seeing here, right? Okay, cool. So this is where my gun is going to go. And remember, my sight is parented to my gun, so it's going to come into play like this, right? Okay, and if I click uh, play, right, that what that does is it shows my gun animating really, really quickly like this. This is the default animation where it moves to the middle of my screen no matter what I do, right? A couple things I got to fix here. Uh, two things. One thing is that my as my gun moves to the center, right, I notice that I'm, I'm losing my, my gun camera is clipping, right, here's my clipping planes, is clipping my gun at 0.3, which means anything closer than 0.3 meters into my camera, I'm losing. So I got to really turn this right down. So my gun camera, I got to change this value to 0.1. There we go. So now this is a problem. See how the, I see my, this thing here right? This quad. I actually can see my quad now, right? And then, you know, from a clipping planes perspective, probably like 10 would be the most I want to see. I don't want to see past my, the point of my gun, right? You know, if I go, if I go one, you won't even see my gun. See the top of my gun, how it's gone. But if I go 10, it clips it after my gun. Clipping means my camera only has, only sees so far and I can only see from so close. If I clip close, that means I can't see anything that's closer than 0.1. Right, 0.1 meters. I can claim, I can clip, I can make that even better. But for now, this is pretty cool. Okay, let's see how that looks when I play. So, because it's important, right? So I'm going to play my gun, and now if you notice, I get my this thing that comes into the middle of my field of view, right? So I want to fix this thing because this is not what I wanted, right? So I'm going to go back into my little animations that I made, which is an AK rifle and the gun aim, and I'll do it again. So let's try this again. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so we'll delete this, and who cares uh, what it looks like in the inspector because I don't need the inspector right now. I'm just going to just get rid of it, and I'll go back to my FPS. I'm not saving my stuff. I'll go back there in a second. It's going to give myself a little bit more room because i got a small screen because I'm, I'm projecting. All right, so there it is, and let's do the same thing. So I'm clicking on my gun. So here's my, my gun itself. Then I'm clicking on Create. Let's see if I can pull this down a little bit. Create. All right, and it creates my animation. I got to choose my animation uh, location, which is in my animations folder, right? That's where it's going to go. I'm going to call this gun aim, my gun aim animation, and click save. All right, cool. Now, notice how it says here this, it's red in the play, uh, pause, and move forward. That means I'm in, I mean, I'm in recording mode. I want to move my uh, the playhead, which is right down here, right? near the bottom of my screen. I want to move that playhead to five uh, frames. I'm going to go to the top of the playhead, kind of drag it across to the fifth frame. Right? What this does is it starts my animation five frames in, all right, as opposed to right away. Okay? And what I want to do now is, now I'm still recording my animation, I'm going to use this screen here as a guide when I move this stuff around. So let me just close this up a little bit because I don't care. And now as I move my stuff in, you can see how my, I want to put my gun aim Closer. This is what it's going to look like, almost like I'm aiming, right? And I'm going to kind of bring this, um, you know, up a little bit, right? Because I'm going to kind of do one of those. And I also want to bring it back so it even looks like it's magnified more, like this. So it's going to go. It's going to do one of those motions. It's going to come in. It's going to aim. You're going to see my aim like that, and then it's going to go back out. So that's my aim. Okay. Cool. That's my gun. If I play this thing, you'll actually see how it comes into my screen right underneath there. Uh, the reason why it does that is because inside of my animator window, is my animator window, notice how I've got my animation sequence that goes gun aim, 
That's my first gun aim animation, right? Remember how we did the animation in 2D? I don't want to go to gun aim first. What I want to do is I want to go to idle first, right? So I don't have any, there's no animation whatsoever. It's an idle, gun idle animation, if you will, right? And then from there, I want to get into gun aim animation, right? So I don't want to really record anything, uh, but I want to move from one animation state to the other, and I want to have a blend mode. And the only way I can blend from one animation state to the other is actually to create an empty animation, right? So how do I do that? Um, well, let's go back and create another animation. So I'm going to go here where it says where my animation window is open down here, and I'm going to click gun aim. And down here, I can click create a new clip. And this new clip, I'm going to call uh, gun idle. So gun idle, right? And save, right? And if you notice, right, I, I can click this uh, record button. Here's my record button right here. I'm not moving anything. And I click my record button, right? And once I click my record button, that's it. I'm recording. I can move my stuff around. I'm just going to press uh, play now, right? And now you can see that I still got that animation in there because my gun aim animation is the first one that's on entry. So I'm move this one up. I'm going to move the, my gun idle animation here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to drag this one, right click, and make this one my, my default. Set layer to default. And now I can make a transition from this to gun aim just like we did before. Let me just press play now and see what happens. So now I'll see my regular gun, right? Now here's the problem. Take a look at this freaking thing here, right, that you can see. It's like almost like this, it's killing me, right? Like half the screen is like this, like, color, right? And I'll fix that when we get back together next day, right? You'll see how I fix this. But this is this uh, quad that I'm looking at. The reason why I can see it is because it's very close, right? And as I move, when I press my right button, that quad is going to come into, into the middle. I can't see my actual gun aim, which is good. It's off screen. But I can see this quad, which is driving me nuts. Right, so I'll fix that when we get back next day. So we're going to make a transition from gun gun idle to gun aim, and the way we normally would do that is do this. Watch, right click on uh, gun idle, make a transition to gun aim, and the same thing goes back. So right click on uh, gun uh, aim, and then make a transition to gun back to gun idle. So I can go from gun idle to gun aim and back. Right, it's so like when I fire my gun, I can go to gun aim. Right? It'll show me that little animation, and then it'll come back when I'm, when I'm done firing my gun. Right? Okay, uh, well, that's when I aim my gun. There's also a gun fire animation that I can use as well, which I'm not going to do right now. Well, let's, let's do this. When my aim value is true, it's a different way of doing things we did last time. So here's my animator. I go to my parameters. I can add a new parameter. We're going to make it a Boolean type instead of a, a number. Right? Instead of a lot of transition states. Right, so here's my Boolean. I'm going to make this called uh, aim, capital I, right? And uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of bury this one over here right, for a second and go back to my animator. Um, when, my, uh, when this is true, right, so when, I, when I've got my, if I click on this thing as an example, I don't have my inspector, that's why it's gone. So let's just get rid of my hierarchy for a second. Let's get rid of my project. Actually, if I, you know what? In fact, let's just move into another thing and go back to FPS. FPS. Um, so when I click on my animator, right, and I'm clicking on my gun, take a look over here. If I go my to my um, uh, if I go to animations and I go to my uh, AK rifle, notice that when I click my up animation here. Right. When it's true, then I want to move into gun aim. So I want to change this condition from this right, to true. And when I come back, right, I'm not aiming anymore, so I'm changing my animation to false. So that's the kind of condition that I'm moving. We're moving from the aim that's true to an aim that's false, and I can check for that when I make an uh, animation reference. And I can say when anim dot, uh, you know, uh, aim is equal to true, then play that animation, play that uh, aim animation, right? And that's what I want to kind of do. Okay, so we've kind of got the rudiments of this. I'm going to save my, I'm going to go back to my scene here. I'm going to file, save my project, save my scene, save my project, and then leave Unity for the day. And kind of come back into terminal and go git add dot git commit minus m, and I'll say added gun site. Right? 
and then git push origin master. And we're going to fix that gun site next time around. It bugs me. I'll probably fix it for next class. So you'll have the benefit of seeing it tomorrow um, if you're in class. I'm not going to record that one, but I'll definitely fix it so it looks nice. Okay. And if I have a chance to, what I'll do is I'll fix it on here before next, next time I see you guys. So it's, not, it's going to look perfect. All right. Okay, any questions around this stuff? So again, I'm making a little animation. I've, tried, I've added the, the asset for the gun. I know it's like really tedious and slow, but we have to make all this preparation go. And once we have it ready, we can do things like firing, no problem. The next time we get together, we'll do a script. So we can fire the gun and a little particle effect to make an explosion. Okay? Questions? All right, see you next time.